Uh, this is breaking. This is not our second topic. Uh, this is not in the dock at all, but we are, uh, we're, this is now our second topic. We're going to talk about this right now. Uh, Plex just sent out a notice to users who are running their Plex server on a VPS or dedicated server at Hetzner. They will be blocking access to these servers effective October 12th. You will have less than a month to not have your Plex server hosted at Hetzner. And this is apparently, um, according to lowendbox.com, part of a crackdown right. on piracy. Well, let's talk about that. Plex has been trying to remake its image over the last few years as a legitimate... Um, streaming service i guess or you know whatever you want to call it but you can you can watch freely available and i believe you can even it's, rent it's not content. hexner it's hetzner, hetzner and it's a server host did i hate did i say hexner no some people were were saying that oh. in chat, so i was helping them find it oh okay het h-e-t-z-n-e-r hetzner in fact i believe i believe they've done sponsor spots on the show before. yeah i think so yeah because you you can definitely do vps uh, and dedicated server hosting at Hetzner. And my understanding yep. is it's a pretty good product overall. But anyone who's running a Plex server there is having a bit, pretty bad time right now trying to figure out where the heck they're going to move all their data and their, well, their Plex server. If you're not familiar with Plex, basically, I mean, do I give the sanitized version or just, do I just explain what Plex is? <laughs> I think you just explained what it is. Plex yeah. is a great tool for filthy pirates who collect... ISOs and and MP4s and whatever kind of media file. One of the most powerful things about it is you can dump pretty much any kind of media file into a library. And as long as you somewhat follow their conventions for naming your files, and you can use tools like FileBot, for example, to ensure uh, or to quickly rename your files and make sure that they adhere to Plex's formatting, uh, it should pretty much figure out what it is and then dump it into a into a graphical library that is easily Ish. navigatable and has all the metadata including cover art and actors and it'll even pull up things like extras and behind the scenes so you can play that back it'll pull reviews from i believe imdb and rotten tomatoes don't quote me on exactly where it'll pull reviews from um and it'll pull you know actors so you could you know browse and you know oh i want to watch other things with this actor in it for example um and there are lots of legitimate uses for plex you can rip your own files and dump those onto your server and plex will serve you up those but what i suspect is that most people who are running a vps uh, at Hetzner are probably not uploading their Blu-rays to that VPS and are probably using it also as a torrent box and, and pulling down ISOs from, you know, places where ISOs might be found. Yeah, lots of, lots of Linux ISOs. And my, my take on this is that Plex is trying to shed that image. And we've seen that over, I mean, but honestly. But why, like, why, if they're trying to do that, why just ban out Hetzner? Um, well, it's not that. Like, why is it specific? Um, my guess would be that Hetzner is probably the flavor of the month kind of preferred. Everyone uses it. I don't know that it for sure. It does get recommended because as far as my understanding goes, for large data storage, they're highly cost effective. This is not an ad spot. That's just my understanding. Yeah. So so there you go. And then someone like a Backblaze, for example, yeah, sure, they're very cost effective for data storage, but I don't think they even do VPS or dedicated server hosting or anything like for that. For who, sorry? Uh, Backblaze. Oh, like, yeah. I think it's I just storage. I think you'd use it. My, my thing is there's just like, there are a lot of other alternatives that are very similar. Um, yeah, people are saying Hetzner has a lot of Plex users that resell access to their Plex servers. Ah, uh, interesting. So, but why would that be unique to Hetzner? So that's the thing that keeps getting confusing for me. Well, if well, that's why I brought up Backblaze, right? Because you can find places that have you know affordable storage, and you can find yeah. services that have affordable compute, uh, whether it's uh, VPS or whether it's a dedicated box. But finding somewhere that has both, well, kind of like you said, maybe Hetzner is just the one right now. Mm. And, okay, we do need to talk about that whole sharing of Plex libraries. So Plex has a feature that allows you to share your library with family and friends. So there yeah, are... I've been, I've been offered access to people's Linux ISOs a few times. You mean their Plex server? Yeah. And that stores Linux ISOs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I'm, you're on mine. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so my, my sister is also on mine. So I, I actually, there are people with, uh, with, like with, um, with their own individual Plex accounts. And I don't think they even need to be paid Plex accounts. Because uh, the thing about Plex is that as long as you're not using their, um, as long as you're not using their their proxy service, all the bandwidth is going directly from the host to the client. So there's no actual cost for them. Um, so if some if my sister was to watch a movie, for example, as long as my upload is up to snuff and her download is up to snuff, then it's good to go. But if I had many, many, many friends who paid me, for example, then running something like that off of my residential internet connection wouldn't be practical anymore and would probably hurt my business model. So if Plex is trying to de-piracy imageify themselves, then cracking down on these commercial users of the product is probably going to go a long way to getting them into in better graces at least with the content providers who they're trying to work with on this on the other side of their business where they're trying to become a legitimate streaming service that doesn't cater to piracy and we've seen this move from them telegraphed for for years at this point i mean if, for at least yeah, yeah i've talked about it a fair bit for at least five years plex has clearly prioritized the legit side of their business over the um, the home media collector side of their business, like wh when's the last time the like download to device feature worked properly, where it transcodes a version that's mobile device friendly and then dumps it onto your device? And they've given me excuses for this. I don't know if you guys know this, but we have we have paused any sponsorship relationship with Plex. I still use the product. I still love a lot of things about the product, but we've paused our sponsorship relationship with them until they uh, they oh, God, meet a bunch of sorry. What's that? As what got us onto this topic? I don't know. Oh, uh, just uh, someone uh, talked about it in chat. Oh, okay. and I just thought I thought it was really interesting. Okay, what, okay, what, okay. what do you want? <laughs> no, I was just trying to figure. It. Yeah, it's this, fine. This it's a WAN show. Does it? <laughs> what guides the WAN show? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Linus is ADD I, times Dan's I, ADD <laughs> divided by Luke's laugh. I don't. That's, that's the formula. I'm amazed it happens any week. <laughs> uh, Xavier in in Floatplane chat said uh, that you do not have to have premium accounts for the people added onto yours. Yeah. Um, he said his his whole family has access to his Linux. So ISOs. that's exactly the thing. So people are monetizing their one premium account, which. Plex is one of the companies that still does lifetime accounts. Like I said, there are things that I still think are pretty cool about Plex, but we've paused the relationship until they get mobile downloading working. Um, I think there's a couple of other things that are, were kind of on my list of, of, hey, you guys need to actually take care of the people who you know bought your software for all these years including lifetime access to plex pass and stuff like that based on these features that are supposed to work before you prioritize the development of these new areas of the business like this is actually not this is actually not cool how long this stuff has been broken i haven't been able to download using that downloader feature for probably over two years at this point that's that's not okay that's the kind of feature that is critical right that I, I want to be able to load some media onto my phone before I get on the plane. Uh, if that's broken, th there should be like a, an, an emergency meeting and people should immediately be reassigned to it. That's not like maybe we'll fix it in two years kind of feature from, from my point of view. Um, but I, I think this is just yet another move that Plex is making to to legitimize the service and I can I can see why a lot of people are talking about Jellyfin and MB in the in the float plane chat because those are projects that due to their structure are unlikely to ever change in this way although ever is a really 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 big word mm -hmm. and at some point I feel like every company that starts out catering to pirates figures out that paying users will give them a lot more money <laughs> <laughs> Bit of an issue. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. There's people t asking me, like, can I, can I, can I change this? Can I talk to Plex about it? No, no, man, I can't. I've already he did he did what he can do. I've already thrown as much weight behind this as I can. I've yeah. gone, look, we're not going to work with you guys until you get back to basics a little bit here, and they basically were like. 
Like I don't, I don't, I don't even know if we got a response. Maybe we got a response that was like, you know what? I think. Hold on, no, I think they did respond, and it was basically like, you got to understand, there's a lot of challenges. And I was like, okay, I, I get it. Challenges are challenging, and then you know, once you've overcome those challenges, then we'll be happy to kind of, we'll be happy to work with you guys again. Because I, I gotta, I gotta reiterate this. I use the product. I like the product. There's a big difference between brands whose products I will use. I use private internet access. But we don't do sponsor spots with them anymore just because of a lot of the scummy marketing that has gone on in the VPN industry that I think has soured people on hearing about them at all. We also don't work with them because of a couple of experiences we've had working with VPNs that have then changed hands, at which point we kind of go, okay, so we just sold a service and then the potential changes to that service could and the data it, that that service could potentially could make it no longer trustworthy for our users. We yeah. just we 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 went went around that merry-go-round one too many times. Yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that I like the product. I use the product. Same with uh, oh, man. People keep bringing up Anchor every time an Anchor product makes its way into a video. People go, oh, oh, you said you said it. I said we wouldn't work with them in a sponsorship capacity anymore. I never said it wasn't a good product and that I wouldn't keep using it. I mean, I wouldn't use a Eufy like, security camera uh, until I, you know, I've seen I an independent security researcher. Because I was, I was at a, a person that I know's house recently with a baby, uh, and I noticed that they had a Eufy baby monitor. And I was like, oh, no. And then figured out that it was... I didn't... To be fair, I didn't look this up, but I was insisted... Uh, on by them that it was a local only one like they didn't they themselves didn't even have a portal to view it remotely They didn't connect it to a network, etc um, So I was like Whew, We're cool handyman in float plane chat brings up a really good point um, Blah 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 blah, but the thing that you're missing is that Plex is a company with liability um, I think that it would be difficult to nail Plex on this But if I was Plex do I want to play with that fire? Probably not. If this is something that has gotten high profile enough that it's gotten someone's attention. And honestly, this like one month deadline acting on this now kind of smells like that. It smells like they got a call from someone that went, we're turning off everything if you guys don't address this immediately and i know you can address this maybe someone with enough technical understanding that they were able to come at them and go the 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 ip blocks that are available per major uh, data center provider are readily available you guys could block these you could do it immediately the fact that you haven't done it means you're complicit deal with this now i could i could totally see that being a realistic scenario here mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Back to Unity, though. Oh, are we going back to that? Sure. Well, I don't think we actually technically finished the topic. Oh, no. People are talking about WAN VPN now again. Uh, float, so it's, we're called, it's called Float VPN. We're bringing it, we're bringing it back. No, yeah, no, it's it going to be WAN VPN now. Oh. We'll, and we'll have Float VPN. We'll just have, we'll be like ah, VPN companies. products. Yeah, where we'll just have multiple VPN products. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, okay, so what's left here? I think we went through most of it, but there is a discussion question from Riley um, who says, what game companies are doing things right right now? Is there any way oh. gamers can incentivize companies to promote the right Oh, no, we were doing topic to two. The Unity positions. topic's done. Oh. Unless there's something in particular. No, we, we didn't actually get to topic two. No, no, we did. He put up topic two, and then I started talking about Hetzner. Dan and I were insane. Yeah, but Hetzner wasn't a... Dan? You, just, you just invented a topic. Dan, were we insane? That's illegal. I just, I just, just follow the time on my sheet. Yeah. And then you can do what you want with He's the cards. He's a robot. He's not a robot. He's yeah. bred. <laughs> you well, can't breed a robot. He has to be organic if he's bred. He's a bread machine What now. is that? It's a bread machine. It's what? a machine, but it's bread. Kitty bread. Look at the top of it. Kitty Show bread. the top of it. What the f***? It's a loaf. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen enough of that. Yep. <laughs> What's going on? Um, uh, uh, we're done topic two now. You actually have to do the third one. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that was a topic. Wait, no, wait. Yes. Wait, for, scroll up in float plane chat and find LTT Labs Jake and read that message. He only tagged me in it, but read that message. What? 
I founded and ran the Pirate Party of Canada's VPN system when I was leader of the party. What? Okay, in we actually had a pirate party. What? Um, that was you? <laughs> well, no, he didn't found the pirate party. He just founded and okay. ran their VPN system. No, he said it when I was the leader of the party. Oh, when he was the leader of the party. Oh. When I was the leader of the party. Okay, one second here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I th I think we talked about you on Wan Show back when the set <laughs> What the heck? That was you! Oh, we talked no. about that Wan Show Jacob years Dance. ago. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm pretty sure it was the red and blue set on the other side of the building and we <laughs> talked about we talked about the Canadian Pirate Party. No, I helped found the party. I was the youngest leader of a federally registered party in Canadian history. How has this never come up? <laughs> I mean, if I was applying for jobs, I probably wouldn't bring it up either. <laughs> okay, but he's worked here for a while. We like talk about stuff sometimes. How has this never come up? I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, wow. Look, I got to be honest with you. That's amazing. It wouldn't have affected your prospects. No, yeah. I probably would have thought it was hilarious. Yeah. But um but I mean I do not, feel a little blindsided not, finding out about it after the yeah, fact. Yeah. It's not yeah, it's not general advice, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, anywho. Long time ago, that's fair, yeah, but like it was 14 wow. years ago. Wow. That's hilarious. So wow. so so yeah, the Pirate Party of Canada I told, was I a told thing. Everyone in my family that the Pirate Party existed. Yeah, I mean I, like I talked about it. I never considered voting for it because oh, I was no. like sorry, but Yeah, sorry. You didn't have a real platform. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Okay. Wow. So okay. so we're bringing it back now then, I guess, obviously. Yeah. I Why mean, not? I mean, we've already got the leadership. Yeah. Now all we need is now all we need is supporters. I mean, oh. we, I, we could, the, we the could drum some up, let's go. The pirate party ship can float on the float VPN. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, I could I could probably do some fiery speeches. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's, we got it. We got writers. We yeah. got writers for yeah. the speeches. We got... Yeah. We got, yeah, but... The new Canadian law, everyone must receive one uh, uh, Canadian-sponsored red and white LTT screwdriver. <laughs> what? I don't know. We have a dumb policy. They would have to all steal the, them. All the fun. <laughs> you wouldn't download a screwdriver. Yes, you would. <laughs> oh my goodness! The VPN money goes into a super pack. Yeah. Oh wow. no. Wow. Um, uh, I don't think we, we have super packs up here, but it doesn't matter. The point is, oh, do we yeah, not? We, yeah. yeah, that's that makes sense. That's an honest. American thing. That's probably good.